final. We've got Carlo Roque. Roque. Apparently he corrected me before. It's Roque? <laughs> yeah, Roque. And Shu Yik. Known as Yik. So talking about uh, Carlo's list, um, he's basically running a Radis three-ship list. And uh, you can see it up on the left-hand side of your screen. But it, the power of his list is the, is the Radis uh, and the fact that the Corvette A with engine techs can't be caught for the most part. Right. No, you're never gonna catch that Corvette. Eh? Like I, I'm guessing. I'm not sh sure what objective we got yet, but uh, yeah. Intel sweep. Oh, interesting. All right. Uh, Carlos also his uh, YT2400 for the Rogues. He, he does a lot of the work for him, either tying up a lot of the squadrons or working on ships. If people to bring yeah, they're just so efficient. Them. Those yeah. that you know that ever since they came out, that's been a thing to just run eight 2400s. Uh, they do work. They got rogue. You don't have to worry about uh, you know having to activate them or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And in the uh, we'll, we'll have uh, Norm Weir on here shortly. But in the last game, uh, when he dropped his ordnance cruiser, he dropped it outside of black range, allowed both the uh, Norm's ships to come into black range before then activating and killing them. That might not work as well against the list because he has six activations. But uh, it'll still be interesting to see how he, where he does the placement. Well, no matter where uh, Carlo drops his MC-75, Yik is going to have a chance to potentially avoid it with his MC-80, and it's pretty maneuverable with engine techs. I'm, I'm guessing that uh, in this situation, he's going to try and block the MC-80. Yeah, drop, it, it, drop it. it in such a way that he's not going to be able to... Uh, expanded launchers on the MC-80. Yes, that's, with ACMs. That's, that's, uh, <laughs> expanded launchers is kind of Carlo's thing. We have a name for the uh, admonition. In the Toronto area, we call it Carlo Munition. And it's like a 112-point MC-30 with expanded launchers and H-9s and yeah. all the toys, Travis Lando, you know. I love it on demo, too. And, uh, I like it, actually, on the new quad with, with, with the uh, gunnery teams. <laughs> Yeah, expanded launchers demo is more of a wave one thing, yeah. but uh, you know it's a big point thing. Yeah, it's get it off. Woo. Thirteen points, and then of course with aspiration when he drops, he'll out set it set oh, yeah. up for a double arc with six shields on both of those arcs. Yeah. So it's a lot to chew through. Do you wanna... Oh, Nor you want Norm Weir is joining us. I hey, think... what, what did I miss? <laughs> well, we thought you went for a haircut, but obviously not. You missed your last game, apparently. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, we've got an Intel sweep with Carlo as first player. The objectives are down. Carlo's lone transport. His deployment's going to go pretty quick. I'm actually surprised his typical deployment is uh, one facing one way and one facing the other. <laughs> But uh, I guess he wants to at least uh, be as far forward as possible to get the squadrons at, in as soon as possible. Oh, he has to do it close because he's actually going to go for the objectives. Well, that's that's his objective ship, I'd assume, is that uh, uh, that that GR seventy five transport would be Carlo's objective ship. But he's, I mean, Carlo doesn't have any chance in this Intel sweep no. because Yik has uh, strategic. He's got strategic. So Carlo still has two more squadrons to deploy, and then he'll be done. And then it'll be all Yik after that. Yik is going to fortress hard. Carlo is going to have create a bubble of flotillas that basically push anything away from it. Yeah, because you can't land on top of anything when you ride a sand, right? Yeah. So he's going to... You almost want to make like a like a screen, right? Physically of distance of shield, of uh, flotillas. Yeah. And, the, I mean, those <laughs> and y, that squadron's outside of that. <laughs> those YTs can throw some dice, but against Biggs, Chan, you're not going to be doing significant damage. It's one thing with, with Rebels, they have that option of, of just running those eight YT-2400s. There's really no Imperial equivalent yeah, to that. Yeah, seven Fire Sprays aren't going to cut it, no. seven Aggressors aren't going to cut it. What about a bunch no. of Decimators? You know what, the problem with that is, um, Heavy. I mean, first of all, uh, Morna Key is just so much better than a regular Decimator, so you want her in there. Okay. Um, that's the first thing. The next one is, the Decimator's 22 points. 
So rather than take Morna Key and a decimator, why don't you just take Morna Key and gend it? Because it's basically the same thing, and it's cheaper. And then it just goes on like that. And then Merrick Stahl is clearly better than a decimator, so then you take Merrick Stahl. There's really no reason to spam decimators. Um, I, I mean, I like them because I think the model looks cool, and I, I think it has a certain intimidation factor. And every once in a while, when you catch somebody with your decimators, it can get really ugly. Um, I've been chased down by them before. But I, I was having that debate with myself last night. I'm like, you know, is a decimator really better than a uh, fire spray? It's hard to say. Uh, I mean, it's, it's certainly better. I mean, it's, it's thicker. It can take the hits. Uh, and that, that means something. Because if you're up against somebody who's got a more powerful squadron complement, if you park him on a rock or something, I mean, trying to do damage to an eight hull decimator when he's sitting on a rock. But then again, he has counter. You're losing that counter. I think the, their, one of their biggest drawbacks is the fact that they're heavy. So if you run into a, an opposing fighter screen, they, ha they have their choice whether they want to encounter right, you or exactly. just go right past you. And you're only speed three, so yes. you have to almost keep them close to your ships then if you want to, yeah. you know. But I've been looking at my fleet, and I mean, the, the squadrons that I ran this, this tournament, I don't think really cut it. Um, Normally you get a really tight, uh, mostly rogue composition. So you normally have Jendin and Merrick as your core, and then you fill it out with Decimators, with Bosk, and other other hard-hitting rogues that you don't have to babysit with your uh, commands. Absolutely. That, that's the main draw of the of, of any rogue squadrons, even, even fire sprays, is you don't have to spam flotillas or whatever to command them. You can leave them to the... Uh, to the squadron phase to do their thing, but even still, I mean, like I like I said originally, I don't see any single Imperial squadron that you would want to spam in the same way that Rebels can spam YT twenty four hundred A wings or Y wings or A wings. Or, or, yeah, well, okay, all right. So we, yeah, you, 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 know, you go down that rabbit hole, and it's like, yeah, actually, Rebels squadrons are pretty good. Yeah, Rebel spam, yeah. So it looks like all the pieces are down. Strategic, Strategic advisor, advisor, yeah, has waffled for time. I don't think he really needed to, but... So I've, I've actually never played against Raditz. Does he have to deploy the MC-75 uh, within a certain distance of the ship Raditz is on? Or no, can it be any, any ship? ship any ship. One, like, so your slightest corner, and then you oh, can do okay. whatever you any want. any ship. Okay. So you can... All right, so so, both, like, so that's, that's actually a lot better than I thought it was. Because you can I thought, put him on an asteroid, but you can't yeah. put him on a squadron. Right, so or, or a ship, right. So that flotilla and both the Corvettes, they're going speed 3 and speed 4, respectively. And then the Corvette has engine tech, so he's going speed 5. Okay, well actually that, that makes Radis a lot better than I thought he was, because I thought Radis could only sort of deploy close to the ship Radis is on. And that would really telegraph where the ship is coming in. But if it can come in on any ship, yeah. now that's that's a whole that, different And that's where game. people are also then dropping the profundity title on it, spitting out another guy past the Radis ship. Right. And then that one goes first. Yeah, the Maracusha, <laughs> Maracusha dolls yeah, or whatever yeah. it's called. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so what is that, effective range, like two range rulers? Yeah. It's insane. It, I think I, I, I worked out, like, a Corvette starting from here, going speed four, engine teching, then dropping the big ship, then dropping, like, a small ship. And it works out to be almost like two and a half range rulers from where you started. There is no escape. <laughs> yeah, there's no escape from it. it it's so that's it's over, the Rebel, Rebel it's Demolisher. It's basically two-thirds of the board to get across. So even in turn turn two, you could be dropped and hit him. So what would you think the, the counterplay to that is? You just want ships that, that can... Your bubble. Your bubble is your counterplay with either I, your flotillas and your squadrons to prevent I tried dropping. that. I, I mean, tried that uh, with having just squadrons in random places. Uh, I tried double ECM ships uh, with Sloan and Carlos still got me. He, he just laser level, laser eyed the exact arc and exact position he needed to systematically take apart my ships. So uh, I think I'm going to be going home and thinking hard how to deal with how do, you deal your life? With, how do I <laughs> deal with life in general? <laughs> Define my existence and uh... <laughs> my squadrons just aren't doing it. So. Well, you know what? I, I always thought that the interdictor has a potential counterplay to that because that token that it puts down slowing you to zero does not go away after deployment. So if you like, uh, 
it's an old Warhammer term, but say puss boxed in a corner and put that token in such a way that if he came anywhere into your front area where you're sort of flying towards, he's going to deploy at speed zero. Um, at a minimum, it would, well, as soon as he deploys, he can't activate first, so you're going to get free shots at him with no tokens on his part. Um, of course, that would require taking an expensive interdictor, uh, and that might be a problem in and of itself. That was actually my plan in Winnipeg, was I had that G7 token just to, to place it somewhere in the middle of the yeah. board where I wanted the fight to be to prevent right. Erratus. But I never faced Erratus. So yeah, well, that's, uh, that's problem. starting uh, bombing action over on... Uh, Oh, Nim's up there already. Up on the Radis oh. Corvette. So Yik is forcing Carlo to act. And Carlo yeah. was pre-measuring uh, distances. So he's looking to pounce, but... By the end of this turn, I bet all the Yik squadrons are going to be over there jamming up the area where yep. Radis will possibly drop. And and is, is Yik going to drop to speed zero on that MC? Oh. That would be... That would be dastardly. Because if he's outside of black range, that MC-75 isn't dangerous at all. No, no, no. It's throwing, uh, yeah. Then you can wait, out, wait him, and then the navigate to come back. Oh, that would be very interesting. It's hey, Lord of Britannia, uh, this game is three, uh, 400 points. That's a standard tournament size now. When the game was originally released, it was at 300, but it's been up to 400. I believe Carlo's bid is about 384. No, it's a uh, 20 points. It's uh, 380. So I had the highest bid on the day with 379. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Just to beat Carlo if I faced him. <laughs> this was the this was actually the first tournament that I took a bid at all. Oh, yeah. I always run yeah, no, yeah, points yeah, because these guys for years they've always just been. You know, 18, 19 point bids. I'm not playing that Leaving game. Leaving a lot of points on the table. Whatever, I'll yeah. take 400. You know, give me what you want. Such a stressful game. Like, what is what is Mac gonna bid tomorrow? Oh, crazy Mac! You can't you can't predict that. You know, the <laughs> nonsense. I think the lowest I've gone is 377, though. I don't think I've ever gone below that. And that was just because eventually I'm like, well, unless I add something like a whole new thing in, I have no slots left on any ship. Right. <laughs> You try to help the caster out by throwing the dials on the table, but clearly it's no good. What is that? Periodically we'll get up and check out. That is that a might be maneuver. A navig That's a navigate. Yeah. We have a Patreon set up to get Norma a haircut. Um, <laughs> There's no good barber in Brantford. Oh, that's the problem. Well, because it's all underwater, I mean. <laughs> after Norm beat me in regionals, I made this dark sort of pact for vengeance. <laughs> And uh, sure enough, well, sure enough, the next day, uh, Norm's hometown of Brantford got like this biblical flood. And I thought, you know, it wasn't really what I had in mind, but I'll, I'll take it, you know. Anything, anything to prevent. But the problem was, Nim, like, Norm, he, he lives on a hill, right? So it didn't affect him that badly, but. I, li I like Star Wars tabletop uh, comment there. You got to know the Carlo meta. Oh, yeah. You gotta like build fleets to take on these jokers with their crazy. Jank. I was I was doing practice with him uh, leading up to this tournament when he was building this list and stuff like that. And are you in? Or are you the only here? list that I found from the Imperial side that was able to mat even counter it was a Jerjerod list because yeah. that was the only way it could react to his two squad to his two ships screaming down the sides. Yeah. And that way, when Radis dropped, I could quickly turn to face it. Otherwise, he was getting my rear no matter what. Right. Yeah, that's it. This is his vassal list. Um, what is Yig doing? I don't know if it's a vassal medal list. He wasn't running this in any of the uh, that tournament that just ended there, the uh, Vassal World Championships. You know what was amazing to me, though, was nobody brought out... Uh, JJ's list. Yavara, Scallon, Haven... Uh, oh, just a normal... Yeah, the Rican Aces or... It doesn't even need to be Rican. Aces, yeah. Dundana. Actually, I think Dundana's worse because you get more Torn activations. Torn comes into it as well. Oh, it, like you get you get more activations out of Dundana. Yep, there wasn't a single uh, one here that I know. And Dundana, when you get when you get a, you know, he's just so and ruthless. I never faced double ISD. Was there any double ISD? There were no du double no, ISD. No, no, no. Not too. Everybody was anything. kind of doing the counter. No, there was a double ISD, was there but one? it was the lower tables. Uh, uh, Carlo bringing in some YTs to chip at some. Uh, yeah, take a take a chunk out of Nim there. 
Yeah. And protect his Corvette yeah. as well. Yeah, it was wise for Carlo to put two of his YTs with that. Yeah, uh, that, that Corvette. really, yeah, that really good. Well, Yik would jump on that Corvette for sure. And, and Carlo now absolutely has to act because Yik has moved up his MC80 to threaten that Corvette. Yeah. That looks like a few hits. Yeah, dropping in blue range isn't going to help against an assault cruiser. <laughs> Do you think he's in range there with from with his MC80? I think so. Yeah. And and I think no matter where he goes, that's a that's a splat splat and on Radis. And there's not enough YTs to cover all of that Corvette as well yeah. for the next turn. So it, Radis should be dropping at the beginning of next round. But isn't isn't what Yik doing here? Uh, he's blocking him right blocking, now. Yeah. yeah. Blocking the deployment, right? With yeah. So. When that MiG-75 drops, it's either dropping straight into the Defiance's side arc, yeah. or so far back that it's almost redundant, and then Yik has the activation advantage after that. Yeah, I really learned a lot from from playing against Yik. Like, uh, he's very like technical, and he always he always has a plan of what he's doing. He doesn't just sort of, mm -hmm. oh, I'll just move here and see how this works out, right? It's always very clinical. Yik is uh, Emperor Palpatine of the yeah, he is. <laughs> Toronto. He is really the reason that... Except uh, runs Rebels all the time. <laughs> I've never uh, seen him play no, Imperials. No, he, he, Imperials. He has a really gaudy, gross-looking uh, uh, Imperial class covered in, like, feathers and looks ridiculous. But, you know, <laughs> it makes an appearance. It's got, it's got rhinestones all it's over it. It's got rhinestones on it. It's so almost as bad as... Uh, gold, gold and silver dusting. Yeah, it's almost as bad as uh, Norm's Gladiator, which... Hey. Hey, Looks like it was painted by an autistic child. Wow! But uh, it turns out it was, it was his painted, girlfriend. painted <laughs> it was by my girlfriend. girlfriend. Yeah, well, you know, that would be my second guess. <laughs> Rude. Did she cut your hair too? Oh, <laughs> she built this list apparently, though. Oh, yeah. for this oh yeah. yeah. I did solicit her for list right. building advice. <laughs> okay. She's the power behind the throne. <laughs> Ignore the woman in the corner. So currently yeah, he has a bid of 20 points. Go 50, 50 bid, yeah. <laughs> or, yep. So Yik has absolutely gummed up the best place to drop the Radis ship. Uh, so the, the only other drop point is going to be this kind of like brick-like space right in the side arc. So he's going to be eating quad batteries. Yeah, he's going to be eating everything. I mean, where would you put it? Just sort of underneath um, where uh, Nim is? Or you know, is that too close? I'm, I'm, you know, or maybe Yik might, might gum think, that up. By the I think a mix 75 with Aspiration can handle that side hit. Yeah. Yeah. I think if he drops double art somewhere forward after the Mc80 would move, anticipating the move, yeah. Then I think he can actually handle just one arc, and one Yik, time. Yik's gonna go over that. One time. Yik's gonna go over that rock. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's okay. So For there's, sure, he's there's two rock. places. One, you can place it slightly to the left of that Corvette. Yeah. Or you can go under. If he goes under, then Yik flies away. If he goes to the left, then Carlo is gonna have to move in and sit on the rock if he wants the MC. 80. So I would rather get on the rear of that Mick 80 because Carlos always going to have first activation. Oh, that's right. So if he drops to the southeast corner of the screen, then he'll take the one hit. But, but then after that, he's first activating and rolling into the rear that, of, that with expanded work launchers. Because you can out activate him. So you get oh, the. It's down. Oh, throws and it down. went right where I thought it was, just underneath that. Uh, Set up for a double arc after Yik moves. Yeah. And there's there's not going to be any escape for that for Yik. Um, <laughs> I would even throw Radis onto the the rock to block the MC80 and the. Not even like Yik Yik could activate. Uh, oh no, he's going to activate. Can he? He can't. All right, so he didn't. He so might have Yik, a. He might Yik have a double stays, arc. If already. he ends up blocking himself and staying, he's double arc. He's already. And if he moves, arc. he's double arc. Yeah. So 
I'm surprised you didn't put a squadron in that uh, in that hole there. Yeah. And in this situation, you that's probably a big only base, bump. right? I yeah. mean, you don't. If you think about it, like you don't have to spread out that much to really deny placing that that massive ship down there, right? Yeah, Carlos checking to make sure at yeah. distance one yeah. that Carlos? he'll still have oh, yeah. a double arc. Now you're gonna get it, Bobby. <laughs> and I bet his front shields are up to six in the front. Oh, probably. Yeah. yeah. Aspiration. <laughs> Which means he's gonna get chipped apart from the bombers on the back. Yeah. Mm. Oh, he's risking the, the block then and not getting a double arc. Unless yeah, he sets up for a double arc a, in this spot. This is such a tough drop for uh, Carlo. Yeah, that's a nice spot. Because no matter what, the length of the MC-80 is not going to get out of it. Yep. Even with an engine tech. Go ahead, engine tech on the rock twice. Uh, does he have them? Um, maybe. As an Imperial player, I don't know how to deal with either of these lists. No, I don't know. They just look like pickles. Pickles with jackets. Pickles with wings. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so it looks like that's the final position. So he's threatening the double arc on the back. And then, depending on where Yik lands, there's very good possibility for. A, a I don't think arc. I don't think Yik can get out of a double arc here. I don't. Where does he go? Even he with can't engine swing text. with that flotilla there. Oh, he's put a chaff token down. He's put yeah. a chaff token it's down. Yeah. So he's obstructed. Side. That's fine. So, so he's obstructed. So now he's only eating in like six he... black dice <laughs> per shot. In it, okay, so he gets rid of red dice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nobody, nobody cries. No. The blue. I think the blue in the front. And he doesn't care about the accuracy either. Pickles are better than yeah, because he's got intel. Pizza on. slices says Parker McClintock. He's from Winnipeg, so Yick will go teach him. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, yep. this first shot that's going to intel officer is brace. Yep. That'll be gone for the second shot unless he doesn't doesn't want to use it. And then either way, you're winning. <laughs> no, he's acting as Jar 75. No, 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 but eventually, when the when the MC 75 finally activates. Oh, yeah, the Intel officer on there. Yep. Softening up some squadrons. Does a single point of damage, maybe. Jan, Brace. So, this is a GR with a panic squadron activation. Does he have a nav token on it? Well, he went speed three right in the first turn. I don't even know if he's bothering. He might have banked it. He has to come in. He has to get into the thick of it. You mean More, for flak purposes? Uh, for blocking. Oh, for in block. the yeah, because if he could turn in and get in front of the MC-80, that would be... Oh. With the MZ-75 behind it, ramming, yeah. hitting, ramming, hitting, oh yeah. But I mean, uh, that, if, that MC-75 is going to put out just an outrageous amount of damage into that super pickle. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and more, more panic squadrons, shut down the NIM. Intel officer is exhaust, is it not? Yeah, so he's gonna have to eat one shot without a brace, and then he will get it on his next shot. Oh, you know what'd be good? The MS1 ion cannons to shut down Intel's. Yeah, well, yeah. Exhaust it, yeah. That yes. Well, but that was my list. Yeah, <laughs> I've been talking about talking That's about my two core vets for profundity, like that. One with MS1 ions to exhaust, and one with the thing that removes a command token for a counter adventure. Oh, well, you, <laughs> you know what? Before what I wanted it is when people were running those super pickles, the super pickle token spam list, and I wanted MC7 uh, MS1 cannons on my Victory Two class. Just to shut down the engine techs. Yeah. And even the ECMs, right, on, on a super pickle. And TRCs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. MS1 is the gift that keeps on giving. Unfortunately, <laughs> somebody brought one yesterday, and they're like, well, uh, uh, I faced them. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, Devin. Yeah. But uh, he said he never cut it off once, nah. and I guess that's the story of everything. I mean, I was. It's an awful card. I, I thought I, mean, I had in the. In the ISD, you don't have enough, like on ISD 1, you don't have enough blues to make it work. Like, you're, the odds of it coming up are pretty slim. the thing with these, uh, these like. Uh, you know, out there upgrades. Like, I brought flechette torpedoes on my demolisher, and I was convinced that this was the best thing ever. It was going to destroy the meta. But uh, I didn't play any squadrons until the last game. Mind you, on the last game, it did do very well. But, uh, I mean, I was playing things like eight, corp eight, eight hammerheads. I mean, who flies eight hammerheads? No way, man. 
So I was missing those proton torps. I could have really used them yesterday. Has so Yick thrown over a dial here's the yet? thing, though. Yick, um, Carlo, I don't know how his shields are set up because of aspiration. So if Yick can get in there and get some crits on him with some okay. of the squadrons, um, with Dundana, he can pull out some nasty crits. Like you can't attack ships twice. I mean, there's some really ruthless criticals in that deck, and Dundana lets you mill through it. Mm. Um, I mean, that might be what Yick's going for here. He's gonna get so, through six because shields. I'm assuming that, uh, like, I don't know where Yick, Carlo has a shield. Yick has currently activated him. his uh, MC80 with a squadron command. Ooh. So he's definitely not getting away unless he's got a nav token on there. Well, he's got Janor, so uh, Carlo cannot tie him up. That's a lot. Oh, oh, shooting that's, a, that's a shot. That's, that's a big a shot. shot. Uh, that, I see a blank. I see a blank red. Um, and uh, Carlo would have positioned this thing so he only gets the front arc anyway. Is that a crit blue or an accuracy? All right, everyone, gather around. Split that's a crit. Blue. That's a crit. Ooh, heavy ions. Well, I do want to say, actually, Carlo did not use aspiration. Carlo did not use aspiration. No. All the shields are all the same. Oh, okay. All right. So that's that's to protect against the heavy Squadrons. ion, apparently. And, and, and squadrons. squadrons. Yes, Jordan, you thank you for your comment. Up. The MC-75 has two contains, but he does not have damage control officer, and Yik has uh, heavy ion emplacements. So any crit, blue crit going through is going to do a sick amount of damage. It's going to do three additional damage to your shields. Again, uh, it would be a non-issue if people brought uh, damage control officers, but <laughs> for some reason nobody takes that upgrade. Somebody uh, had it yesterday. Yeah. Th there's too much competition for the officer slot. Oh. There's so many good things you want. Which is weird because I never used to take officers on any of my ships. The gunnery team slot in the officer slot. <laughs> oh, yeah, gunnery team. You fill in your gunnery team for sure. You know, it's either ordnance experts or gunnery team. Those are your two choices. Like. <laughs> All right, so so Yik. Defensive retrofit, who cares? <laughs> can Yik get out? Oh, he had a squadron token. Okay. Nav token, yeah. So it has to be a nav token. And here's the escape. I don't can think he get he out? Can. Yeah, he, he can. Look, look, at where, look where his three is. It's off. Mm, yeah, off but, on the far. Yeah, but I mean, he has to not his, swing at two. You got to think about his, to hit the flotilla. his ass he end to is going to be two speeds behind where he's where he is, right? Yeah. So he really has to cut it hard with the engine techs. And he's going to eat those delicious asteroids on the way out. Maybe. No, uh, no, no, no. He's good. He's going to eat at least. He's going to eat that rock at he least do the once. One and go straight up and down so he doesn't hit the flotilla, and then go hard at the engine tech. He might be able to swing out. Uh, yeah. okay, okay, so that's a rock for sure. Okay. He's not going to get out. Car Carlo needs to get a um, nasty crit. What is it? Come on, Yik, show the camera. Capacitor failure? Uh, oh, capacitor, capacitor failure. failure. That's the one where... You guessed uh, two words. Hull <laughs> Zone has zero shields remaining. Can't regen. Sorry. Which, that's, that's not the end of the world. Perfect for yeah. not using aspiration. That's good. <laughs> no, it's on the... Oh, yeah, that's right. It's on, on the, the, it's on the super yeah. pickle. McKady. Oh. Did he hit it again? No. He is he not out of... Double arc either. Is he? No. Oh, Ooh, that's hard to, that's hard to tell. Where's Carlo? Carlos gonna get in there. Carlos looking. Oh yeah. Oh. I'm gonna go check that. Because if he escaped, that's a that's a that's a game swinger right there. And that's he might not even is he even black I think he's in black range. <laughs> At that point, what do you do if you're uh, Carlo? Do you just start you're, you're, ramming you're, flotillas with your quantum storm? You're bo you're boned, basically. It's a capacitor failure. So that's the one, if you do not have shields in a hull zone, you cannot regenerate or move shields to that hull zone. And he did get out of double arc. He is out. Oh, that's bad news. And you don't know what the range is, eh? That looks like uh, it's not even... Yeah, I don't even know side arc arc side. Yeah, they're checking again. You better be sure. Um, oh. Ginkapo says, I am disturbed by my ability to read blurry damage card titles. Um... <laughs> We are definitely not casting on 1080p. I think this is 640 <laughs> by 480. It's just the monitor. 24 bit. <laughs> Carlo can hard turn uh, and get a front arc next turn. Yeah, That's potentially. Then he's good, probably going to hit a crit. Then, the then he's going to be rock. riding that asteroid. The rock. But, oh, it's a Dodonna rock. Yeah. This is the Akbar without Akbar list. Yeah. Like, it's got all the elements that you would want in an Akbar <laughs> list, but it doesn't have Akbar. <laughs> 
because according to Yik, Akbar sucks. Um, well, the Don is just ver- ver- is verbatim. Dodonna's only 20 points. That's as cheap as you can get for an admiral. That's, that's and his ability... That's 18 points. It's less than a flotilla. <laughs> yeah, Imperial know. flotilla is 23 points. But, uh, I mean, like, you just the value you get at a Dodonna, and, I mean, it, the psychological factor, too. I'm always like, really? i got to pull out all my cards. You avoid rocks. Like, oh, okay. You, yeah. It's, it's nasty. He's going to pull a capacitor failure. I just know he's going to pull a capacitor failure. Yeah. That one where you reduce all your shields in an ISD, so you go from full strength. Oh, the to one where I can change your dial or drop oh, you to zero. Oh, I actually ruthless. pulled that one today. It was perfect, and you went to speed zero, and I was like, "And you're dead." Now you're gonna get it. <laughs> now you're gonna get it, Bobby. <laughs> my weak double arc got that crit off, and I'm like, "And you're dead," because yeah, okay. I don't even need my Avenger title in this situation because he was even saving his uh, tokens for the Avenger hit. Now that Corvette. Now the, the, gonna, the sneaky ruler coming out. Yeah. Gonna go look for some flotillas or what is he I doing? Uh, maybe, uh, no, he won't go for the ram, that's for sure. <laughs> maybe he's got hull damage. Maybe he wants to go down. That thing, that uh, MC-80 does not have uh, reinforced bulkheads, unlike the MC-75. But just go tit for tat, side to side, side to side. So do you go flotilla hunting? Well, with Janus Light, no, he's got to get out of there. Yeah, he's got to bail. You don't want to give up the points. And it's, and it's his admiral, so, I mean, 24 bucks to points. his admiral's bad. useless now. It's just... It's still 24 points. It's just points. Yeah. How many points is Radis? He's only 24? I thought he was more than that. 23? 23? No. Let's speculate. <laughs> we don't actually know. 40. How many points is Admiral Radis? Radis? I think he's 24. 26. 26. 26. 26. Oh, well, okay. none of us got it. Imperials. Those, the admirals <laughs> yeah, are all imperial players. The, the In admirals my mind, he's worthless. <laughs> yeah, the, but the admirals over thirty points. I really always have a hard time justifying. Yeah, I'm not it's a. Just, it's, it's, it's a lot. Thrawn of, even like I think early in conflict, he's a great magnifier. I, I don't know. Thrawn hasn't been out for long enough. I mean, I, I need I, more chances to play around with them. I think there's potential there. Uh, but I, I haven't. I think Thrawn is good. He's just maybe a little too expensive. Perhaps two, two to three points too expensive. I it's like every list you look at, okay, I'm starting with Mahdi. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, do I go to Sloan and drop a point? <laughs> or up a point? I can't remember which way it is. Or J- JJ. <laughs> or, or JJ. Yeah, and Sloan, drop a point. Sloan, JJ, or, Mahdi. You, like you Sloan start with Mahdi. I start with Sloan. Christian starts with JJ. I think Christian has the right. Well, I always end up in JJ, though. <laughs> Ozil, Ozil's not bad either, actually. Uh, yeah, I, yeah for the, I think, you know what? And especially if uh, we were talking earlier before he joined us, Norm, about how strategic advisor is almost like a crutch. Upgrade, yeah. um, and that there is a way to fly, being careful, and you know, carefully choosing your speeds Especially and JJ. ranges, Speed and that you don't three. actually need the activation advantage. Correct. Right? And a, a, an admiral like Ozil can actually really help you to control that control the range, right, and control the engagement. And certain ships, you just they just can't they just don't work without. Um, range control. Without range control or some sort of admiral that lets you change your speeds. Like, if, if you ever try to fly an Articans without um, <laughs> JJ or Ozil, it's like, it's, it's, you it's have to spam, thing. you're spamming nav commands on everything. Yeah. Uh, and the Raider is the other thing. I mean, without some sort of, you know. Jump in mechanic of going from one to four. Yeah. yeah. Well, mind you, I'd, I'm not, you know, I haven't tried Raiders for a while, but and I've always been trying to make them work, but. <laughs> I think there's potential there with heavy ion emplacements. I mean, Be- just because on the Raider 2, just because you can stay at the long range, so you can get the, the money out of your, your Wait, redirect or your abyss. Hypothetically, I've got a Raider with Darth Vader. He's, he jumps in and he discards the Aspiration title. What happens to the shields? Nothing. It's already been affected. Yeah, it wouldn't do anything. Does the game just end? Profundity would kill the, the ship game that's hidden. Just <laughs> the game, the game implodes. <laughs> no, but like Profundity would kill that ship. Yeah. Well, that's that was the main problem with the Raider ones. Is they to 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 do anything, they had to get close. And as soon as they get close to anything, you like last a, first a gentle no breeze takes them off the table. Stay away from squadrons that have on, haven't activated. Like there's so many. Like oh yeah, my god. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. Here's here's the ship. It's a Raider with Darth Vader. Um, let's put on heavy ion emplacements. Okay. Um, it's a Raider 2 then. So it's a Raider 2 now. Uh, let's put on Minister Tua and ECM. There we go. They well, can okay. survive keep, at one shot. Brace alive. Yes. <laughs> that's so now your equivalent of 6 that's, all. that's your solution to the Quasar, so maybe it would work with a Raider, but now we're talking like an 80 but, point Raider. Then, what are you going to put on your Quasar that goes with <laughs> And then it point. <laughs> Yeah, if you use up Minister Tua, what are you going to defend your Quasar with? 
Yeah, no, I, I think, but I, a Raider two with uh, decaps and. Uh, Here comes some black. High so Billy wasn't black. <laughs> Carlo gives a thumbs up. Okay. There's a double. Oh, two that's doubles. a lot of doubles. Two doubles. Two doubles. Three doubles. Three doubles. Oh, that's four a lot of doubles. doubles. Four. <laughs> I think no, you got a double. Yeah. Double, double, double. Like, oh. oh. It's a lot of double doubles. So that was close range. Tim most Horton, most Canadian shot. role ever. <laughs> yep. uh, All our American uh, people listening will be like, what? Yeah. Who? <laughs> he contained and redirected. I don't believe he used his brace because it was probably intelled. But how would it contain help when he's just going to ACM? Oh. Contain? He might just spend it just as a, what if he doesn't? Spend the uh, well, that's ACM. the same, right? Why not? Because there's but if he doesn't declare the ACM, because if you're never going to be shooting your side arcs, I'd rather the crit going in, right? And I mean, uh, that pickle's at full health, so it's got full shields, so ACM is not actually that bad for Yik. Uh, I would think he'd rather take the ACM than take a critical, yeah. uh, into the hull, right? Because he's already taken a critical uh, running over that rock. <laughs> Yik analyzing the damage report, he's considering. Whether to redirect brace. Well, I'm assuming there's an intel officer on the brace. Oh, definitely. So, with that much damage, the brace has been intel officer. Oh, I would, I would think so. All right, there's an ACM if he reaches for the back. Yeah. There go some shields. More shields. Shields gone. Is that one? That looks like a one. <laughs> there won't be much left. I don't think anything went in, but. Uh, Maybe so, so you think thinking, he's got a double arc next round? I can't see his defense tokens. I might want to run over there and check. Did he discard? He, so, oh, no, he, he threw out the brace and the redirect. Oh, I, wonder what, a, I wonder what speed Aspiration is actually deployed at. Because um, he hasn't moved yet. That's because he moves after shooting. Yeah. So. <laughs> yes, Norm. <laughs> but you would think he'd have a concentrate. Concentrate fire the yeah, turning put him down, down, right? And then maybe a nav. I think he's at speed one. And then no, he wouldn't go speed one. He's gotta go speed one. Ah, he deployed speed two because he doesn't mind ramming. Well, we don't hear him complaining about Hondo, so or maybe he is. Hondo would be nice to be able to pop it for the nav token. So I don't know if you saw him on the stream, but he did throw away his brace on that time. Yeah, he did his tell off for the brace. Okay, okay so what the brace speed is, gone is now. Uh, the mix seventy five going? And how many hollow or shields are left on that? It's okay, we're gonna know in a second because he's gonna move it. Yeah, zero shields on that facing flank. On the facing flank, okay. and uh, I think zero shields on the front. Zero shields on the front as well, which are the big, yeah, the big amount of shields. So, no brace, no shields front and and uh, facing side. So that's that was a good hit. Oh yeah, <laughs> and uh, Carlos done a decent job of breaking up uh, Yik's. It is speed one. It is speed one. Oh, it is speed one. So, come he's on. He's not taking the double. Crit. Double. He's not oh, taking that's the a double. Crit either. That's, a that's double. another double next turn. Oh, oh that's a double. Oh, that's going to hurt. Rip. Is he taking a double, though? Rip. Oh, no, the McKay you made. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That could be it. With no shields, he's going to oh, no brace, Intel the no redirect shields. on the first It's attack. the empty side. Oh. <laughs> Yick. There's speed one, by the way. Yeah, speed yeah, one. I saw that. ACM is very, very powerful on that thing. I wonder if he's got an unobstructed shot to the back. But then, then he's got... He doesn't want to redirect to that far side, though. So you shoot this gonna, side, he's, he's only got it. the weakest. And yeah. Well, that's the front, so there's none up there. Yeah. None to the right. So he definitely he'll shoot the side. And then that way, you're only shoot, redirecting the weakest rear. Losing the uh, redirect on the intel. I think Yik's best chance is got to try to get some crits into that. And speed. Into that, into that get pickle, away. And get that crit where you can't but, attack but, a ship twice oh, in the same round. fish for it. Fish for it. I mean, that could save him. But that thing's got double contain. If he can yeah, also get his good point. Mick 80 up to a speed 2 and engine tech away and get a flotilla in front the of the 75, is he'd Carlos go going, first, so. going first. He's going to eat it yeah, first. Yeah. Oh, he's always yeah. definitely eating it. I, I don't know if he can live. I don't think so. Not not without some. Uh, Lots of prayers. Coffins. Yeah, Mick Panzer 80, Ninja definitely, yeah. putting out the coffins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is almost how almost all of Carlos' games have gone in this tournament as well. It's like turn two, turn three, and it's yeah, it's all or nothing. It's decisive, it's, it's one way it's or decisive, the other. Yeah. Carlo is ruthless, absolutely ruthless. 
Uh, some token shooting going on. We don't know what it is. There's a reroll in there. Um, uh, that looks like um, Nim because it's a black and a blue. Mm -hmm. Are we going to see those contained tokens? Uh, and he runs back to the station. Yep. Getting the coffee. I wouldn't. You gotta get rid of that redirect. That was a squad activation. A little flotilla. Buy some time on the bottom. Did Yuk win the first game between Carlo and uh, yeah, and when they played in Swiss? Yeah. Yuk win like 10, 10, 6, 10 or something like that. Like it's, he ended up with thirty three points at the end of the day. So oh, he was yeah. like a good four points ahead of next place. Yep. So. You were second with 29, right? No. Or Carlo was in second with 30? Was in sec 26. Well, I had 29. You had and then no, you had 28. I had 29. Oh, and you had 29. Okay. And then the um, there was a bunch of people tied for four. Yeah. Mac and Eric were tied for 28. Mac had the slightly higher MOB. Right. And then and you Yick were played Eric in that last round, correct? Yick played Eric in round three. So then, if I won against Eric with that strong score, it just pushed him out of mm. the top four and somehow got Mac in. So the Mac dream was alive for a little bit until he went up against Yick. <laughs> This game like looks insanely complicated, say it's uh, zero miss. Two hole um, damage now on the uh, MC-75. Yeah. How about I get there? Which is... Uh, squadrons. Uh, squadrons, yeah. It's uh, controllable. Yep. Yeah. So that's the thing, like if... if um, Where are the YTs? Like Why are they stopping this? The super pickle. This is during a... Because you've got Janors. A, uh, oh. And he's got Janors. So, I mean, even... Yik is going to lose that super pickle. There's just no way it's going to survive the next the next the uh, turn, but so, so he, he could potentially kill it with squadrons, um, because yeah, with Janors and Bigs and those YTs, they, you know. So then, okay, so so they trade they trade big, they trade big ships, big and ships, but then you could Carl, potentially Carl's, kill Carlos. Carlos bid though. Yeah, Carlos, Carlos going to find bid Jan. Will actually help him because that points don't count against you. Yeah, unless he gets stable. But how big is Carlos' bid? 20 points? 20 points. And Yick's bid is what? None. Oh, he doesn't have a bid at all? No, he's 400. That's why he had to roll off from the last game. Right. But I mean, that's... Uh, Do you think anyone remembers that it's Intel sweep at this point? <laughs> I don't think there's been a single token lifted. <laughs> no, there's been two. There's two, two yeah. tokens collected by Oh, so, oh he did kick them. I haven't seen them. Like I thought they were underneath the ships right now and nobody was paying attention. Right now, technically, uh, Yik is winning by 75 points. Shout out to the French contingent that came up. There was like three or yeah, four Yeah, that guys. was really cool. Yeah, they, they, This was a true Canadian national. It's not a single American. <laughs> <laughs> came came over to uh no? well they don't want to get no. they didn't want to get their asses kicked. Oh, there's one. Up. Yeah, oh. the one that's playing right in front of us. Who? Oh, Max? Yeah, Max. Oh, Max American. Max, Max, Max American a citizen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's a citizen. Uh, he lives here though. Like, he lives yeah. here, yeah. We're making fun of you, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> Back to your game. <laughs> Is that a whiff? Uh, nope. Uh, no. A little bit of chip, uh, damage. Bit of chip damage. So, if the chip damage continues, he's going to nickel and dime the Yik squadrons. Yep. He might lose his MiG-75, but again, he comes to that MC-80. Well, Ca Caster is, table says it's dead, but... Jaina's late look like it's in a position where it might be okay, as long as it doesn't slide into... Uh, you know, off, well, he's not going to go off the board, but as long as it doesn't slide into a side arc and the Yik does that like a... Penalizing shot against it or something. Yep. Um, his his uh, GR seventy five on the other side. Um, there's nothing around that threatening it either, and it's got the YTs that are nearby. We got the, like what, the, the what the what the heck what is that? The, that was a black guy on the. Yeah, I know. MC. I saw that, but it's. Uh, so we it got like we got the hit. panic bombing. There we go. Uh, no, no, as as I counter. Oh yeah, that'll take forever to chip through that uh, YT thirteen hundred. <laughs> Uh, does it have heavy? Uh, YT-1300? No, no, it has escort. That's what's 15 points with a seven-hull escort ship. And I mean, why can't have Imperials heavy? have nice things? And Bigs. And Bigs and Jan and... Uh, <laughs> why can't we have nice things? We have Muller Mythyl. That's all the nice things. <laughs> and then they got Jen Num. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. But then we have uh, Jen and Merrick. That is true. 
but then they or Jendon the, anyone really. I think uh, yeah. <laughs> Jendon like, Saver, Jendon name, name is <laughs> Jendon Dallin. Like it doesn't matter. Jendon name is Sloan. Basically, Sloan plus what? He's he's a Sloan fighter. Oh yeah. Yep. I mean, what's least about Jendon is just that add in the relay, but. I mean, you're paying 20 points for him, so Jenna you, can, you can just buy Vader. I mean, it's the equivalent of another 20-point squadron. Exactly. We were talking about that with really, the decimators before. So yeah. there's no reason not to take Jenden yeah. if you're taking any squad. Like, even as long as it's a better even if you're double points. tapping with a saber squad, Jenden is worth it. I because, do all the time. Yeah. Yep. Has anything died? Like double tapping no. with the Vader squadron, actually. That's uh, he just annihilates squadrons. Panzer Ninja says, yeah, "Adar Yav, uh, quiet down, Panzer Ninja." <laughs> So nothing has died. Lots of things close to death. Of is no this, squadrons. Is this uh, next round? Uh, this yeah. is top of next round. Yeah. Okay, here we, go. here we go. Here we go. We got blanks. Uh, thumbs this up from Carlo. This is we up got front. Uh, greedy roll for greedy a double. Roll. Oh, he does have two a double. doubles. He's, two, got, he's yeah, got, got a dead. double. Double. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, <laughs> oh, we can redirect a little bit. One hole from the side because there's no. Oh, he's got a so There's a hole that goes in. Oh, and then on top of the damage. Oh. Uh, Yik's not pulling it off yet, so we'll Wait, see. what? How does he well, suck shields? Get... Oh, no, here come more damage cards. Oh, oh laying it no, down. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, it's okay. gone. She's gone. There's one more arc in there. One more arc. Uh, the side arc. Uh, we got a runway die. Ooh. I see a double. Two I double. see two doubles. It's a double yeah, double. it's gone. Yik, Yik doesn't count it. It's gone. So Carlo uh, busting open the points pinata and ramming a flotilla yeah. as for celebration. That second um, roll was crushing, right? Yeah. Hit crits and crits I think he almost he basically because he's got ACMs, right? So I mean, once your shields are gone, <laughs> oh, it's you know you're taking Such you're taking it in, yeah. yeah you're taking that damage in the bones, right? Yeah. Oh. Well, the score just swung the other way. So yep. everybody prepare to beat this at Worlds. <laughs> yeah. Or it's, it's it's probably the you know what it's almost like a list like this only. almost <laughs> yeah. so the only it almost that's reminds me of these BT Avenger lists right where a good counter to it is just have nothing Fortilla worth <laughs> jumping on. <laughs> All right. It's, like, yeah. it's like okay, you killed my uh, Articans yeah. or you killed my Quasar. Yeah, it's like whatever, whatever you know, yeah. and then. Uh, you know, if you've got a good squad complement, you can wipe out these uh, these YT thirteen hundreds. Get yeah, out of here with that! You're right? shooting before they yeah. get changed. Decimators. That's what we were talking about before. <laughs> Mac Mac was complaining. Coming um, into the decimator meta. <laughs> Mac was complaining during Swiss. He wanted to avoid the guy with the the seven hammerheads and two GR seventy fives. He's actually playing against him right now. Oh, he is playing against yeah. I totally underestimated him, and he rammed the shit out of me. And I was like, <laughs> why wasn't I spamming engineering commands? I should have seen that coming. <laughs> I really like spamming this because right now the the guy that ran the hammerhead, he's, uh, his, his name is uh, Louis Andre. And I was he, he's actually playing a Corvette Swarm right now. Oh, he's playing the Corvette Swarm. But I was blowing away hammerheads like left for dead, and it just made no difference. Well, he's running Reekin too, so. Oh. Yeah, 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 you're getting rammed. Whatever you do. The destroyed uh, cruiser was Yik. Super pickle is down. Yep. Yeah. So Carlo is now ahead one. He's ahead by hundred points. Hundred points. So if if Yik can kill Carlo's uh, MC seventy five. Uh, Carlo's in a lot of trouble, but it's still fairly healthy. It's got two damage on it. Janors will become a factor right now. He does no longer have Dundana to help uh, push through the crits, but I mean that thing's got two contains anyway. But I mean, you'd be surprised what what a, what a couple of X wings and Captain Nim can do. Do you know that that flotilla that's in front of it is probably dead next turn? I mean, there's no squadrons, and then he's running, and the squadron battle happened behind him. If you can get up to speed three, if he's got a nav token and nav command coming just, up. Just run. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's probably the smart move. Oh. Jane of Light turn out to the left. Bit of shield damage. Well, no one could definitely complain about uh, these uh, streamed events. <laughs> that's why we didn't put Norm on the stream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doing guests a favor. Can't fall asleep watching squadrons. <laughs> Those hair would have scared the viewers as well. <laughs> Every time I had came in the Block the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I need a haircut. <laughs> yeah, 
just to let everybody know again, we do have a Patreon set up to get another haircut. This barber shop was destroyed in a biblical flood in uh, in Brantford, Ontario. <laughs> Well, I had it in my list. It's not It's not that uh, somebody was asking. I heard you guys aren't a fan of Strategic Advisor. I'm a fan of it. I ran it. But I'm, I'm coming to, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm thinking to myself now that Strategic Advisor is maybe a little bit of a crutch and maybe something I can let go and maybe I can I can get more use out of a different officer yeah, than, than just always taking, yeah. you know. The, so it's not that I think um, I'm not a fan of uh, Strategic Advisor. I think it's a great card. But I think it's uh, something that, uh, maybe not completely necessary, and maybe it's something that you can mitigate just by being careful with your speed, your approach, and your deployment. Uh, because at the end of the day, activation advantage is, is a number of things. The deployment advantage is also a very big deal. And um, even if even if you have yeah, even if you have five activations, uh, if you're getting out deployed, that doesn't necessarily matter so much, right? Because. Uh, <laughs> So there's a question there about how did Yik get 75 points. Well, right now he's got two of the objective tokens for Intel Sweep. So as of right now, he's but, but winning it. Just now. Yeah, uh, oh. it's it's part of our casting Carlo overlay. Just Whoever's it. ahead immediately gets the uh, points for the objective. However, since Carlo picked up the second Intel Sweep, it that no 75 point yeah, is fine. nullified. Yeah. Are we going to see some uh, Quantum Storm Flotilla demolition action? <laughs> Some double ramming itself. Some double yeah. ramming. The best flotilla hunter is actually a flotilla. Yeah. Does Carlo get greedy and go for the table? <laughs> just to rub salt in the wound, or does he just run? I wish there was a critical where like your ship like plasma core goes nuclear just, that's it. and just does yeah. damage to all the squadrons that are within distance yeah, one so of it. That would be. But really it's cool. a delayed turn. You have one more turn before your ship blows up, no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> a harpoon missile for Armada. I'm not sure that, that Armada needs harpoon missiles, yeah. considering I think they're, they've are they trashed X-Wing. Nope. Let's, yeah. let's not keep them in Armada, but... Uh, yeah. Like, a, a critical card that, you know, your ship goes Nova, or whatever. Like, your yeah. reactor goes critical. Yeah. No matter what, by turn six, that ship is gone. Yeah, right? and, and, you know, like, so or whatever. So, up then, you might as well just go for it, yeah. <laughs> More bomb in action? This looks like, uh, looks like uh, that's Captain Nim. <laughs> and he got the got crit. crit. Yeah. Well, what are we losing today? Actually, he might even just press for the damage. Well, he's got a contain. Well, yeah, it depends where he's attacking. Well, he'd, oh, yep. throw out the redirect, because it only has one, right? Yep. So once that's gone, then right you can just... Hit and hit and yeah, hit and yep. Hit. Stick your fingers into that hole. <laughs> get that bone. Get that bone, right? <laughs> PG podcast. Of course, yeah. <laughs> but I never said it wouldn't be in poor taste. <laughs> so it has. Wow. So we stripped everything. Okay. Not sure if the stream heard so that. Uh, three shields on the rear of the MC-75. Single token left, uh, thanks to Nim. It's an exhausted uh, contain. contain. That's and almost gone. It's got four, three damage cards on it. Four, four, four damage. damage cards. Four, yeah, four damage. So, so that's five hull remaining. Five hull remaining. And it, the way Yik has clustered his. Uh, you afford to lose it. The way Yik has clustered his um, his flotillas, I don't think that MC seventy five can escape now. And I think Carl going speed one, out. right? Well, looking at the the points difference, there even losing the ordnance cruiser, um, Carlo will still be ahead. However, it's then it'll be down to the squadron fight whether Yik can make up the ground in the squadron fight. And well, I think he can. Um, I mean, with uh, with Biggs and Jan Ors and. Just gum it up. YT, YT 1300s. You're uh, always hitting what you want to hit to nullify, like the right. guy with the one hull that you just need to kill off, like four yeah. points. There's, uh, there's also this one that you see right here. Yeah. This one Intel Sweep token left on the board. Right. So the, the, the last but Intel what are the Sweep token ships? is right underneath, right due south of uh, the number three yellow marker. So th sorry, I, but I should have point. Uh, I should have if he's in distance, of, I don't think he is. So the uh, flotilla on the Carlos side is an objective ship. Yeah, I figured that, but I don't know what Yix objective. Well, Yix was not in range. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because right, he was picking up the, oh, the okay. first two, so now he can't pick up any more. He just needs to prevent. But Carlo he can prevent Carlo from picking them up. So Carlo moving. Here comes Jana's that. light. Jana's light. Probably gonna go. Oh, I can't ram. Uh, Oh, he's gonna get him. 
He's gonna get him. Well, next turn, definitely. maybe. Yeah. Probably. Go for the double arc on it for next turn. Oh, so you can in the block. The flotilla block. Yeah, because it's probably cruising in speed one, even if it goes up to speed two. Yeah. I don't know if they it's, can get it's by. It's probably. <laughs> it's either gonna go down with squadron commands or. <laughs> Well, no one can say that this is being slow playing. We've still got two hours left. <laughs> yep. I think it was certainly a positive change to, to remove the Admiral from the flotillas. Because oh. um, there was really no reason not to put your Admiral on a flotilla. Uh, even just in the sense of just spreading out your points. And I think that hurt me actually yesterday was I had my Admiral on my ISD and I should have put him on my ARC. Yeah, we talked about it. There was really it. no reason to put him on the ISD and it just makes the ISD an even more juicier meat target. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that, but that's part of it. It's really just spreading out your points so that, you know, you don't Nothing's get... a critical loss. Yeah, if, if you lose something big, you don't really want to lose 170-something points in one shot. And that's sort of what we're seeing here. But like Carlos, that's a jacked out MC-75, but because he doesn't have his, um, his Admiral on it, it's still under 150 points. It's a lot of points, but... The bombing pain continues. Uh, another face down going to the MC-75. It looks like there's two, four, six damage on it. Three yeah. pain might be gone three now. hull remaining. And it's, if I'm not mistaken, there's a rock right in front of that MC-75. Yeah, uh, but there's a flotilla to cushion that landing. Yeah. Right. So yeah, up, right, I guess so. That. Yeah. Unless the flotilla goes out of the way. And then hopefully he's got a nav command lined up with a nav Well, his so own flotilla is also going to block him. Maybe he doesn't have a nav command, so his flotilla is going to save him from that rock. <laughs> yeah, that's possible. Wait, what's that? what's that little screen in the bottom... Oh no, that's just a mess of. That's just that's yeah. poor housekeeping. In the bottom yeah, left-hand yeah. corner. The only thing that he has off the table right now is the Mic 75, oh, Mic 80. Yik activating his flotillas. It's going to be more and more squadrons. It's going to be a drive. Yeah, he's because he's still it, got Jan Oris. He's going to kill that. Uh, he's going to go all out after that uh, MC 75, and we're going to have a squadron fight probably to decide this. Yeah. Yeah, in between the mat the in matches, I was talking to Yick, and I said even if you'd lost your Mick eighty That's before, a crit. The, before the another uh, crit, what did we just get there? It looks like blinded um, gunners. Uh, no. It's a ship or is it a crew? It's not much text. It's gonna get flipped down. Thruster, Tr thruster Fisher. I'm, so I, I can't you change read. your speed. You take a damage. I think that's thruster. Or, or fisher. is that the yaw? Is it the yaw one? I think the last yaw. Wait, so it doesn't make a difference if we know the name of the crit card because we don't actually know what the crit card is. I don't have the memorized. Like the last yaw is reduced. By oh, yeah. Oh, that's the, that's the one where you get it on your victory and you're just sort of. <laughs> Correction, it's whenever you change your speed, you take a damage. Oh, oh that's Thruster Fisher. Yeah, that's what I figured it was. All right, so he's really got to block up that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so that, now he's that going. That command's not going to help him now. <laughs> he's going on that rock for sure now. Because yeah. otherwise, he, well, he's taking damage either way. Um, oh, here we go. This could be it right here. What's he getting attacked with? This arguably could be it. This is uh, another X-Wing. Uh, it could possibly be it. He's just trying to keep it maybe in Janor's Ranger. Okay, here it comes. Oh, what's it going to be? No Bomber Command Center. Come on, Yik. Yeah. Roll the die. Roll the die. Yeah. Suspense. Oh. <laughs> He's messing with us now. Oh, oh it's yeah. paint. It's there's paint. Something. It's another oh. crit. Crit. Oh, it's no. A and there's probably no contain left. No, it's probably gone. Or even if he contains it, he's taking a damage. He's got Thruster Fisher. He's going to end up on the rock. But he's, the Donna he's, will pull up structural. Yeah. Yeah. Donna's dead. The Donna's dead. Oh, the Donna's yeah. dead. That's right. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Wait, I thought it's. I thought that it, 75, 2, from 4, to four <laughs> 6, 7. So it has one hole? I haven't seen Carlo put another damage card on there. I don't envy uh, the editing that's going to have to go into this episode. Oh, it's going to have to be heavily edited. <laughs> Professional casts only. YouTube standards. See, I can read. See, he prefers Poe. Kinka Poe. Kinka Poe. I prefer Kinka Poo. <laughs> that's better than, like, Gallopus. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, looks like we've got some uh, YT2400s being thrown into the fray. Just to lock stuff up and hopefully maybe kill Jan. Or go is it go if, get him, boys. If Jan's, like, if Jan's gone, he might, well, he can't escape. No, like, he's dead. He's going to beat there's himself. A, there's a rock, yeah. Costa Concordia. <laughs> Too soon. Engi engineering command Too with soon. a nav token. Classic Concordia. <laughs> We've got a, that's not in poor taste. I mean, that was dumb. He was trying to show off, and he like reefed the ship. <laughs> And then he was the first one off the boat too. <laughs> that should be uh, that shouldn't be Maudie's ability. That uh, <laughs> you know, if when your ship, your ship gets destroyed, down, if you got a lambda within range one, Maudie escapes. He goes on the lambda before anybody else. <laughs> so just quick update. Uh, uh, Nick's uh, YT thirteen hundred died. Yep. And one of Carlos twenty four hundred is dead as well. Okay. And Carlos tacking now with the twenty four hundred. Uh, three damage. It's on a VCX. It's on a VCX. Oh, that thing's never gonna die. No. My, my bottles don't make that noise. <laughs> uh, no, I believe you. I'm just checking. I mean, they've got it. Oh, I got lucky. Sure. You can have one of mine if you want. The bottles are harder to get rid of. <laughs> this is my last bottle. Two for Carlo left. Oh, here. <laughs> Stash that one. <laughs> Ooh, that was a good one. <laughs> uh, that VCX dial is being spun up and down. Yep. We have no idea how many HP it has, uh, but it's less than eight. Squadron's being shot. Uh, another 2400. Ooh, that's a nice Ooh, roll. It looks like three hits. Three hits. It's down to maybe. It's still alive. That maybe thing is three ridiculous hull? amount of hull. So the, the VCX is down to three, as is Nim, but Nim's hiding out on the other side. Nim. And everything else is relatively unscathed, maybe one or so damage on each. Okay, is he going to roll a triple? Is he going to roll a triple? Oh, I think he got it. Yeah, two, he got it. Three, oh, yeah. oh. So cleans up a VCX. Which now that'll start impacting. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's uh, that's going to Yeah, that's going to make it. That's, that's a big one. That's a big one. Because that, that reduces still squadrons. Another, that gives Carlo advantage I mean, on the yeah, road Yeah, some of the squadrons are in range already. I mean, though, it's good, but, but, still. but there's still a VCX sitting on that rock right in front of the MC-75. At this and point, I'm willing to. that thing is at full health. And I think Carlos only got one hull or something left on that on that uh, pickle with a jacket. Is, is Carlos uh, MC seventy five listing slightly to the left? <laughs> I think it's it's bleeding it's bleeding fish people everywhere. Well, if this was the newest movie, it would actually be drifting backwards at this point. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, we said we'd keep it in you know. Uh, so Star Wars Tabletop asks, uh, isn't there something better to be shooting at than a VCX? Things are heavy. Just move past. Uh, oh. The reason what? just uh, something died. Something just died. Yeah. So the reason to kill the VCX Yik just lost a, a transport. Ooh, yeah. That's the, and that was the one that was that blocking. was that oh. was transport number three. That was torn far bright hope. Just went down. And Carlo tosses the dial away. <laughs> what just killed it? I'm not sure. Maybe probably a, a ram. A ram. I think it actually was the squadron. No, because the ram. I don't think distance one would have cleared that rock. And We're ram. not paying attention to what's going on, are we? <laughs> It's hard to follow. I mean, we've got our uh, the like our, table, our table by. mic We're is across being the used room. for X-wing. Yeah. <laughs> We're across the room, oh and uh, we have a steady train of uh, couriers. Tor and far. Oh, Tor and far. Uh, that's down. it. Tor and far. That should reduce the nims. That of <laughs> so the reason to kill the VCX and Tor and far is they're both the VCX allows all those spread out flotillas to affect the squadron battle. So that allows Yik to activate all his squadrons before the squadron phase, at which point Carlo can't use his first player advantage to take out a low health squadron that hasn't attacked okay, yet. Okay, this is uh, this oh, is Nim. Nim whiff, get the uh, whiff, he whiffed. And Yik shakes. Oh, uh, that was it. Yeah. yeah. So Yik takes 2018 Canadian national. No, Carlo. Oh, Carlo takes Carlo it. Carlo takes it. Oh, my God.